Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and as many of you know, I'm the black powder guy for Guns of the Old West, and I also write for American Frontiersmen. And today, I'm going to be doing a video on period correct ways of loading a smoothbore in the 18th century. And we'll do that with both round ball and with shot. Uh, for the test today, we're going to be using this French style fusee, which is made by Red Jacket Muzzle Loading. It's a 20 gauge, and uh, it's been pretty accurate. So let's see what it can do. Civilian smoothbores like this French fusee were the most common weapons in the American frontier of the 18th century. And the way they were loaded uh, was quite different from the way military muskets were loaded and from the way civilian rifles were loaded. And there are some period correct loading techniques, and that's what I'm going to take you through today. Well, we're going to start off loading patched round balls, which uh, I would say is the least historically correct way of loading a smoothbore civilian gun like this. But I find it hard to believe that it didn't happen, and that's, that's why I'm going to show you. And the reason I feel that way is because a lot of the guns that we consider rifles today, rifle styling, had smooth bores. And this summer I was talking to an expert in Lehigh Valley rifles, and he's examined about 70 original guns from the Lehigh Valley, and less than 10% of them had rifled bores. Most of them are what we call smooth rifles, and they were loaded like rifles with patched round balls. So I think that people who were familiar with rifles would naturally load even a fouling piece that way. Now, there's no documentation that says that that happened, and I think it's most likely to have happened later in the century, uh, after the French and Indian War, when rifles were more common, and to have happened, obviously, in areas where rifles themselves were common. But I'm going to show it to you because it's actually the most accurate method of shooting a smoothbore gun. And I've, I've seen that with several smoothbores that I've owned. I, I don't shoot them that way myself anymore because I don't really feel it's correct for the time period I like. But, uh, but I think it's fair to show it. So I'm going to start off by loading 80 grains of 2F powder. And I'm just using good old GoX 2F. So can't beat that, right? I'm just going to dump that down the muzzle. Then I'm going to take a, a, a greased piece of pillow ticking for a patch. And this is uh, 0.018 thick. And then I'm going to use a round ball, and, and I use 0.570 round balls, even though this gun is a 20 gauge, and therefore it is 0.615 inch diameter. But, uh, and a lot of guys use a much bigger ball, they usually use 58 calibers or even even 60 caliber balls. I don't because I've, I've found that there's no need for it. I can seat this ball, it's, it's a loose, fairly loose fit, but I can seat it with my thumb. It makes contact all the way around the barrel and that's all you want. I mean, when you're using a patch in a smooth bore, there's no rifling to get it into. You just want it tight enough so it's not wobbling down the barrel. And, and this ball does it, and it does it in a fashion that's very easy to load. And certainly, that's what you want with a smooth bore. You don't want to be hammering a ball down. And, and this loads quite easily, time after time after time. So I'm just going to cut that patch off. A little mess here. There we go. And I'm going to seat it down on top of the powder. And here at the range, I'm going to use a range rod that has a muzzle protector on it. Because I like doing that. But this particular fusee from Red Jacket has a very good, a very good rod that's got uh, kind of a tulip shaped tip that's almost the full 20 gauge. And that is good because later when we're loading with some different loading methods, uh, if, if you don't have a wide tip, your paper or, uh, or your wad's going to turn on you. And that's no good. It'll, it'll want to go straight down the barrel on its side. So I'm just going to send this home. And now we're ready to go. Just that simple. 
and you can keep loading this baby like this just about all day really it'll it'll keep going down at least in this gun uh, all we need to do now is prime it and shoot it and I'll prime it uh, right out of the horn at the line and I'll just show you a target this is a very typical target from this gun so you can get an idea of what this round ball Well, Evil Roy is about 50 yards behind me, and he and his band of renegades has been menacing everybody on the Pennsylvania frontier. So I'm going to take my fusee, loaded with a uh, Pat's round ball, and stop his depredations. First I'll prime it, and I'm just going to prime right out of the horn the same 2F powder that we're using in the charge. You don't need to prime with 4F, and you don't need much priming in the pan. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Try to get it up here. But that's all the priming I've got in that pan, not a whole lot. And that gives you much faster ignition. Now, as you saw from my target, this gun shoots considerably low with this charge. So I'm going to have to use a little Pennsylvania elevation on this, see if I can hit old Roy. Well, I missed with the first shot, so the Indians killed me. Because uh, on the real frontier, there's no do-overs. But luckily, we're out here in video land. So I think I've got my holdover settled now. Evil Roy is still 50 yards away, tapping his foot. So uh, let's see if I can hit him this time with a patched round ball. <laughs> got him right between the eyes so even though patch round balls probably were loaded uh, it's not really backed up in the literature the two most documented ways of loading a round ball are to use wadding either of tow or of cut paper and tow is uh, just flax fiber and cut paper is just exactly what it sounds like so let's take a look at how those are loaded well, the next two methods of loading that I'm going to show you are well documented in the 18th century, and they involve using a bare ball. And a lot of people for a 20 gauge use a, a 0 0.60 inch ball. Uh, I like using 0 uh, excuse me, I like using 0 0.610 balls. So instead of a 60 caliber, a 61 caliber. Uh, I also use a pretty heavy powder charge. Typically I use 110 grains. And I find that that's what it takes to uh, get accurate shooting and to get these things hitting at uh, pretty much to the point of aim. And, and one thing you got to remember is these guns don't have a rear sight. So accurate shooting can be problematic. But it's kind of surprising how well they do. So... There's two different ways of wadding those bare balls, and that's what we're going to cover right now. The first way involves using paper wads, and really they're paper, more like paper cards. I'm just going to show you. If you're using a 12 gauge gun, this is a 20 gauge gun, if you're using a 12 gauge gun, you'd use a piece of paper one inch by two inches. I use a piece of paper three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half for this 20 gauge gun and what you do is you just cut them out and this this is a cheap paper that silhouette targets are made on and you just fold it in half and we're going to use one of these over the powder and another one over the ball so I'll just fold up another one to have it ready like I said this is a very well documented method uh, this was even used in the military among skirmishers who loaded from a horn uh, with a smoothbore in the French and Indian War and in the Revolutionary War because these guys are more accurate marksmen. 
uh, and they, they could load more accurately than by using the paper cartridges that were typically used for, for muskets. So we're going to start by dropping a powder charge of 110 grains of 2F GOX. And I know it's a pretty healthy powder charge, but what it, what it does is it gives the ball enough of a kick to make it fill up the bore. Top's right, I got my powder sticking in here a little bit. There we go. Alright, so first send the powder down. Then I'm going to take one of these pieces of paper and I'm just going to put it over the muzzle. Now I gotta tell you, these paper wads I find are extremely, extremely fussy to load because they want to turn sideways and slide down the bore like a knife edge. And that's why it's, it's very hard to load them with a thin ramrod. You need one that's pretty much the diameter of your bore. So I'm going to get that down, get it on the powder. Whenever I load a paper wad, I always check the end of my ramrod to see if there are any powder grains on it. Because if there are, that means it might have turned on me and I didn't realize it. All right now I'm going to take the 61 caliber ball and I'm going to send that down. As you can see, it pretty much wants to drop down on its own. So, there's not much resistance on that. Now as this gun fouls, there'll be a little bit more. But uh, different guns handle things in different ways. I've shot another 20, 20 gauge that I had for a long time that really you need to swab it between uh, shots unless you're using 60 caliber balls. 61s, you got a fouling in there and it just did not want to go. This one, I can load 61s, well, I'd like to say all day, but I just don't know. I mean, I've never hit a point where I couldn't load them, but I've probably never done more than six or seven at a time. Let's see if I can get this guy to go without turning. Okay, so that's paper patching, and let's go see how it does. Okay, I'm giving Evil Roy a break here. I think he's been through enough. Uh, I've got the uh, Fusi de Tool loaded with a 61 caliber bear ball and uh, paper wadding, and we've got a water jug, one gallon, situated 50 yards downrange. I'm going to try to pop them. Now just to manage expectations, this is a gun with no rear sight, smooth bore, bare ball, so let's see, no guarantees. Well, I winged him. I'll have to show you on the close-up. He's bleeding. He's going to head for cover, maybe. I'm going to try to put another one in because it looks like the water level's only dropped halfway in it. Let's see if I can finish off that, uh, that water jug with my bare ball and paper wadding, or if winging them is the best I'm going to be able to do. I <laughs> got him. <laughs> the second method of loading a bare ball, it's very well documented, is the use of tow. Now, tow is this raw flax fiber, uh, which eventually could be carded and spun into linen fabric. But just the fibers make a very good wad. And you just pull off a bit, or cut off a bit, and roll it in a ball in your palm, and use that as wadding. So we're gonna we're gonna load up. Once again, I'm using 110 grains of 2F Go X. I know that seems like a heavy powder charge, but it is what I have seen work in several guns, much better than the lighter charges. So I'm kind of sold on it. 
All right, so we take a ball of tow, get it into the muzzle, take the ramrod, set it down. Now we're going to take our 61 caliber ball. And another ball of tow on top to hold it in place. And that's it. Well, let's go see how it does. Well, 50 yards down range, we've got another gallon jug with a death wish. So let's take the Fusee de Chasse, bare 61 caliber ball, wadded with tow, and see if we can make a splash. Got him. This target was shot at 50 yards uh, with the Fuzi using 61 caliber balls and using several different patching methods, both the paper and the tow, and uh, with 110 grains of powder and with 90 grains of powder. And as you can see, the 110 grains of powder is where it's at as far as accuracy and getting on with the point of aim. Here's another 50 yard target with the 61 caliber balls. Uh, this was shot wadded with tow and all in a black. Well, I hope that demonstrates that, uh, you know, our colonial forebearers were not exactly helpless if they weren't armed with a rifle. That this smoothbore hits what it's aimed at pretty reliably. Now, I know I missed that first shot uh, with the patch ball, but that's because it shoots low with that powder charge, and I was off on my Kentucky elevation. Uh, all the bare ball stuff with 110 grain charge, that's just aiming right on with that front sight. No rear sight taking them down. It'll, it'll easily take a hostile out to 80 yards. So that covers round ball loading in civilian guns. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at traditional methods of loading shot in these guns. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll click like on this video. And if you like it, I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss an update.